Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Portantier, who is the senior editor of Theater Mania. Dot com. He's going to be talking musical stuff, original score, and orchestrations. So stick with us. It's the WGBB Tony Award special. So much more. And here's Michael. Music, music, music. It's all about the music in our next two categories that we're going through on the WGBB Tony Award special. We're going to talk about the best original score category, as well as best orchestrations for this past Broadway season, and helping us do that is the senior editor of TheaterMania.com, Michael Portantier. Michael, how you doing? Hey, David. Great. Great. Great to hear from you. Thanks for taking part in all this, and let's, let's go right to the category, Best Original Score. So you've got Curtains, which is Candor and Ebb and Rupert Holmes going up against Grey Gardens, going up against Legally Blonde, the musical, and Spring Awakening. So, do you have any sort of sense of what you think will win or what you hope to win? Uh, well, in this case, I think it's it's one and the same. Uh, um, I think it's pretty much a lock for Spring Awakening. Uh, there's been a tremendous amount of uh, excitement about the show, uh, you know, uh, really a new style of music on Broadway, and uh, everyone seems to love it. Um, and um, all the other shows, I would say, got uh, mixed reviews uh for the for the scores themselves, um, so I I think it's I really think it's kind of no contest, you know. Hmm. And did you when you saw because the the main competition people would normally say is Grey Gardens. When you saw Grey Gardens before Spring Awakening, hmm. was that for you an early leader or were you kind of unmoved by it? Well, I um I think I'm similar to many other people in that I had. Uh, mixed reactions to it. I, I liked much of it, but um, I, I, in particular, had a problem with the first act, which I think a lot of other people do. Uh, I mean, the score is, uh, in general, is, is quite well written, but I think they didn't uh, solve all of the structural problems of the uh, of the show, and that's reflected in the, in the score also. Uh, so, And they did make, it's interesting, they made quite a few changes uh, from the off-Broadway to the Broadway, but I don't Personally, I don't think they necessarily improved it. I think hmm. They just changed it. See, for me, I, I saw it off-Broadway and, and on, and I think they improved the first act. They made it go faster, and they streamlined that. But then I felt the second act somehow dragged a oh, bit that's more. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so, so somewhere there's something there that yeah. uh, could be worked. And, and, and just um, your thought about, see, for me, Legally Blonde and High Fidelity almost interchangeable. I would have rather seen High Fidelity in this category, I think. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. I actually really liked High Fidelity, uh, especially the, the score. Uh, I mean, I think it does have, again, some, some structural problems. And, uh, you know, I mean, it wasn't a hit because of a number of reasons. Uh, I think primarily because, well, it didn't have a star in it and, and, and some other reasons. But the score itself and the, uh, the cast album just came out. It's really terrific. I, I, a friend of mine got it, and he said it's the, the only cast album he's put on his iPod in the last, I don't know, several years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Because uh, everyone uh, I'm talking to obviously has Spring Awakening on their iPod, but it's interesting for him to say that, that High Fidelity is on his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how much he liked it. And it's really ter- some terrific uh, some work by Tom Kidd and, and Demanda Green. So I hope uh, that show gets, you know, other productions somewhere. Um, it's interesting that, um, I guess maybe not too surprising, that Pirate Queen was left out totally. Mm-hmm. Um, if they hadn't done a little thing called Les Mis, it probably would have been <laughs> Yeah, I think that maybe the, the, the day is over for those for those guys, uh, at least as far as the critics are concerned. Oh. And uh, also, um, no nomination for the, you know, for the new music in Mary Poppins. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, I figure if you, what do you think of when you think of Mary Poppins? Chim chimney, chim chimney. Yeah. Mean, all the songs you think of immediately yeah, yeah. were from the movie. That's not fair necessarily, but that's just the way it is. Yeah. And what was the other show you you said that uh, might have? Um... Well, Legally Blonde did get nominated, yeah. but um, I guess there was another one or two. I'm I'm, I'm kind of blanking on them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I didn't get there. Well, oh, actually, the Martin Short show. If you th- oh, that had some great new material yeah. in it. But you know, I mean, it's I guess it's not surprising that it wasn't nominated because. People thought of it more as a, of a comedy than a musical, <laughs> you know. What about best orchestrations of the year? You've got Grey Gardens, Bruce Coughlin, Spring Awakening, Duncan Sheik, and then two from Jonathan Tunick, Love Music, and 110 in the Shade. Well, that's that's an interesting one. Um, you know, Jonathan Tunick is, is the acknowledged master uh, of, of orchestrations. Um, he did win in 97 for Titanic. I looked that up. 
And <laughs> Bruce Coughlin went for Light in the Piazza, so they both uh, won uh, an award. Um, uh, love Music, uh, Jonathan Tunick might get it for Love Music uh, for being so brilliant and kind of um, recreating the atmosphere, the, the, the chord vial sound. Mm-hmm. Um, he might get it for 110 in the Shade because... Uh, I think that show, I think the survival was a, a, a very pleasant surprise to a lot of people just in general. And he uh, he does really beautiful work in it. Um, so. And when you see Jonathan Tunick's name, you sort of know it's going to be a class production and it's going to sound really good. Yes, and he's very good at uh, a very necessary talent nowadays, somewhat unfortunate, well, quite unfortunate, is to be able to take uh, or full orchestrations and reduce them uh, for yeah. the reduced forces that that are used on Broadway nowadays, and and it's an unfortunate thing, but at least he's he's very good at doing it. Pretty soon, all musicals will be scored by synthesizer and oboe. That'll be it. They'll have one oboist. <laughs> interesting <laughs> how uh, the equity. Yeah. Uh, interesting how uh, Mary Mitchell Campbell was not nominated for Company last year. Uh, hmm. Sarah Travis was nominated for Sweeney Todd, the other John Doyle show that had the actors on stage playing the instruments. Maybe, I don't know, maybe the nominators are getting tired of that. I think that's a shame, because, I mean, I think her, if nothing else, the Sorry Grateful on the new mm-hmm. company is gorgeous. Oh, it's it's very well done. You know, and one interesting thing is that, uh, you know, one interesting thing about the John Doyle shows is that, um, I mean, we may quibble with them for whatever reasons, but it is... Uh, um, I think it's very exciting to actually see the musicians <laughs> while you're hearing them. You know, I mean, uh, in almost all cases in modern day shows, uh, the, the musicians are hidden. Either they're in a pit that's totally covered or they're backstage somewhere. Um, so there's this disconnect, you know, with the sound. Whereas in the old days, you at least, uh, you know, you had the musicians in an open pit at the front of the theater, and that's something that's lost now. It just kind of makes it seem... Uh, seem more synthetic, you know, in addition to the all the, the old the amplification, amplification yeah. nowadays. Yeah. I will say that was one of the real pleasant surprises of 110 in the Shade and the, and the way they do stuff at Studio 54. You see those musicians up in the upper left and the upper right in the balcony, and it makes a bit, you hear them beautifully and clearly, and I think that helps a lot. Yes, and oddly enough, I'm, I'm glad you said that too, because I actually heard, I've heard some people complain about I think actually one of the reviews said that the that the arrangement of musicians uh, when they do musicals at Studio 54 and they you know they put them in the two boxes as you said is someone wrote that it was impossible or ridiculous or something like that I I think no, it's the opposite yeah you know I love it, it. It, it 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 because because they're up there they amplify them less and it makes it sound more natural and it also there's a really nice stereo effect that happens <laughs> and uh, I I think it's great. Okay, speaking of great Michael Portantier, what was your very, very favorite show of the season on or off Broadway? Well, musical, musical-wise, musical uh, definitely, I would say Spring Awakening. And it's interesting, I saw it off Broadway, and when I saw it there, I was a little disappointed because um, I guess I know the play very well. I've seen several productions of it in the past few years, in fact, and um, they made some decisions that I didn't totally agree with, and also, I, you know, I maybe had something else in mind. Uh, but I think um, between a combination of the fact that they did, again, uh, I believe they made significant changes and improvements um, in the in the text and the score uh, from off-Broadway to on-Broadway. And then also I think just getting used to, me getting used to um, the approach they had taken and, the, you know, what they had done with it. Because it really is very, very innovative and, and bold and... Um, and, uh, it's exciting. I thought it was a pretty exciting yeah. musical. Now, now we do have a little bit of time, so I'm going to ask, what was the worst, most awfulest, awful thing you saw all season? Well, I, you know, I didn't go back through the entire catalog, to, so I can't give a definitive answer, but I, I, would, I guess I would have to say that the times they are changing <laughs> was, was up there. Yeah, it was just, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. Lightning certainly didn't strike twice with the... Uh, for, for, for Twyla Thar. Thar. Yeah. But thanks so much for striking us with the lightning of your mind. <laughs> oh, you're oh, that was the worst segue of the night, easily. But but certainly great to have you as part of the Tony special, Michael Portant here. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks so much. <laughs> 